Hi everyone, this is Danny for Terrain by Tags, and today we are working on a 2009 Audi convertible diesel and the customer complaint is an extended crank time when the engine is hot. So let's diagnose this together. In the next step, we're going to confirm the customer complaint. I hooked up my scope to the crank sensor and we're going to see how long it takes for this engine to start when it's cold and compare it to when it's warm. Now, we need to do this in order to find out if we fix the problem afterwards. And of course, we need to find out if the customer maybe is lying because of course this customer is paying me to find a problem that isn't there. Doesn't make sense, does it? So this is our captured waveform of our crank sensor signal on a cold startup. In order for us to find out how long it took for this engine to fire up, we need to zoom into this waveform. So let's zoom in. And let's zoom in even more. And we can see we started cranking over here and the engine started to pick up speed and started running over there. So let's place cursors and find out how long it took for this engine to fire up. And it only took 700 milliseconds. So it only took 700 milliseconds for this diesel engine to fire up. In the next step, we're going to get this engine up to operating temperature, redo the test and see if it really takes longer for this engine to fire up when it's hot. So I had a cup of coffee, the engine is warmed up right now. So let's redo the test and see if we can confirm the customer's complaint. You might have noticed the engine was cranking a little bit longer. I did the same measurement again and this time it took 1.6 seconds for the engine to fire up. A full second longer than when the engine was cold. So customer complained, confirmed. Now a second might not look like a long time, but it's enough for the customer to notice something is wrong with the engine. In the next step, we're gonna hook up a scan tool and hopefully there is a fault code stored that could lead us into the right direction. I scanned for codes and there is a code stored in the PCM, being the 12295 camshaft position sensor G40, no signal. And notice how the code is intermittent. We've got a fault code stored for the camshaft position sensor. In this particular case, Audi uses a Hall Effect sensor. Now before we can start diagnosing this sensor, and since this channel is called Trained by Techs, let's do a little bit of training and refresh our minds on how they operate. We've all seen a Hall Effect camshaft position sensor like this one. But to get a good understanding of how it operates, we need to take a look inside. A camshaft position sensor consists of the following parts. A plastic housing, a permanent magnet, and at the tip there is a circuit board with a Hall effect element. This sensor is a three wire sensor. We've got a power, a ground, and this pin is connected to the signal wire that comes from the PCM. This metal block is made of a magnetically conductive material. This block is attracted by the permanent magnet inside our sensor. The attraction between the two gets stronger 
when we move the block towards the magnet and weaker when we move it away. Placed in between the permanent magnet and the metal block is our Hall element. The Hall element is able to detect changes within the magnetic field. With the help of the other electronics on the circuit board we can use this sensor as a switch that can detect whether the metal block is there or whether it's not there. I've got the meter hooked up to the signal wire of the sensor. Right now we are reading 5 volts. Let's see what happens when we move the block underneath the sensor. Notice how the voltage is being pulled down. Let's move the block away and the voltage returns underneath the sensor and away again. Now let's imagine that this block of metal was attached to the camshaft exactly at the point where cylinder number one is at top that center at the end of the compression stroke. The PCM would be able to tell that cylinder number one is about to enter the power stroke. Now notice that the sensor is able to tell the position of the block even when it's sitting stationary. In other words, the engine does not have to turn over for the PCM to tell the position of the cylinders and this way it can almost instantly identify the position of the engine and fire up right away. Now most PCMs are smart enough to calculate the position of the engine even when the camshaft position sensor is not working but it will just take a lot longer for the engine to fire up. In this case the connector for our camshaft sensor is located at the front of the engine next to the oil filter. Since it's only a three wire sensor I'm not going to bother looking into a wiring diagram. We only have a power, a ground and a signal wire and in most cases the signal wire is the middle one. In the next step I'm going to hook up my scope to that signal wire and see if we've got a good signal. If we do we can automatically assume there's nothing wrong with the power or the ground. As you could see there was nothing wrong with our cam sensor signal. Now if the signal is good, the power and ground are also good because a bad power or a bad ground would affect the signal. Now this engine is cold right now and the long crank time only occurred when the engine was hot. So in the next step I want to locate the cam sensor, apply heat to it while we take a look at the waveform and see if anything changes as the sensor heats up. <laughs> Our cam sensor is located behind the timing belt cover very close to the cam gear. In the next step I want to heat up the sensor while we keep an eye on the signal watching our scope. We're going to see if there's any change in the signal as we heat up the sensor. In order to speed up the process of the sensor heating up we're going to use a heat gun. Now be very careful using a heat gun. Don't put it on the maximum setting because we don't need to melt the sensor or damage any of the surrounding components like the timing belt. We just need to get that sensor up to operating temperature because that's the range our complaint is occurring. Now let's start this engine, heat it up, watch that waveform and see what happens. <laughs> 
As you could see, we lost the signal when we heated up the sensor. So apparently, this sensor fails when it heats up. There is a very important lesson that can be learned from looking at the footage at the moment the signal drops out. When the signal drops out, we can see the reference voltage coming from the PCM is still there. Meaning this is not a PCM or a wiring issue, at least not on that wire. It's just the sensor no longer pulling the signal down. While this engine is still hot, I want to demonstrate that without the camshaft signal, it takes a little bit longer for this engine to start up. I hope you could hear there was an extended crank time without the cam signal. Now in order to be 100% sure we've got a bad cam sensor, we still need to check the power and the ground. Now in order to do that, I want to add an extra channel on the scope and use both the positive and the negative lead to monitor the power and the ground to our sensor. So if we lose either the power or the ground, we will lose that trace. You could see we lost the signal, but we didn't lose the power or the ground. So this is a sensor issue. Now I want to see if we can get the signal to return by cooling the sensor rapidly down with this product called Freezer. Now I always like to diagnose a hall sensor with an oscilloscope because it's very visual. It makes you see what's wrong right away. We would even catch mechanical problems like a missing tooth on a gear. But there are ways to check hall sensors with more basic tools like a multimeter. The first check is a very basic check. I back probe the power and the ground and I connected the back probes to my multimeter leads. Now if I turn on the ignition and we've got 5 volts, this means we've got a good power and a good ground. So let's turn on the ignition and watch the multimeter. Since we've got a bad cam sensor and I've got new ones in stock, I'm going to hook up a new one to the connector and demonstrate how to check the signal with a multimeter. At first, we need to back probe the signal wire, which is the one in the middle. Then, we need to connect it to our multimeter lead. And then we hook up the other side of the multimeter to battery negative. Now when I turn on the ignition, we should see a reference voltage. So let's turn on the ignition and watch the multimeter. The 5 volts we're seeing is the reference voltage coming from the PCM. Now every time something metal that's attracted to magnets passes this sensor, like the teeth on the cam gear, it's going to pull that voltage down. Now let's see what happens when I pass this metal ratchet by the hall sensor. Voltage goes down, up down and up. You could also slowly turn the engine while the sensor is installed and see if the signal changes. Another thing you can do is set your multimeter to hertz, start the engine and see if you got a frequency. So let's start the engine. And the frequency should change with the engine speed. 
So let's rev it up a little bit. And you can see the frequency change. Now all I need to do is change this cam sensor and the Audi will be fixed. Now everything I just told you applies to all Hall Effect sensors. It doesn't matter if it's a crank sensor, cam sensor or an ABS sensor. Now I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider subscribing to Trained by Techs and learn from the top technicians in the industry. This was Danny for Trained by Techs from Holland Europe. See you next time guys.